Amigos, thank you so much for the great response for the glowing light animation. In case you miss it, check it out. I'm putting a link in the description. Now many of you have had many questions and in this tutorial we're going to address common problems that you might have and how to fix it if you're doing this glowing light animation. Number two is how to use auto trace and the pen tool to create an outline for your images. And number three, how I remove the background. And if you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and amigos, always remember that life is truly a gift, so make it count. Now, some of you are having issues that when you check paint not transparent, it turns black, or if you have a transparency grid, it disappears. Now, to fix it, what we need to do is just first go back to the composition window and just make sure that your footage with no effects is the bottom most layer and the layer that you're using to draw to paint is on top. If that's okay, most likely when you started to draw, you had in the paint panel, let's go to the paint panel, you had the channel set to RGB. You need to start out with RGBA. Now, if you already drew it, we can switch it back, but what we need to do is select your layer, here, type in channels, and let's make this big, and we'll see all the channels for all the brush lines that we drew. So select the first one, let's drag down, all the way down, hold on to shift and click on the very first one, and you see channels, let's switch it to RGBA. So you can see all our brushes are now switched back to RGBA, and the A stands for alpha, which is an alpha channel, and it allows us to have a transparent background. Perfect. Now, when we go back, and we solo this layer, you can see that is now on a transparent background, which is awesome. And when we unsolo it, it's on top of our base footage. And now we can add our effects, go to generate fill. We can change the color and we can add our glow. And that is how you fix it. Now, there are different methods that you can use to outline an image. Number one is we can try auto trace. Number two, you can use the pen tool and the shape tool, which is the method that I use for the dance video. And number three is we can draw the lines in Illustrator, copy and paste back into After Effects. Let me show you the first two, the auto trace and using the pen tool and the shape tool. So let's select the image, click and drag to the composition icon. and what we need to do is create a high contrast image. So let's add two effects. Number one is, let's make it into a black and white image. And the second one is, let's add a levels. And let's just drag the sliders and make it a high contrast image. And you can see that this image works really well because we have a solid background, in this case a white background. If your image has a very busy background, it may not work well, this method. Okay. Make sure that your layer is selected. Go to Layer, Auto Trace, and make sure that it's in current frame. The channel is set to luminance. You can leave these values exactly how you see on screen. And the last thing is make sure that you apply to the new layer. So make sure that it's selected. Hit OK. And After Effects traced your image by creating the solid layer and using mask. Now, if we drill down all the way, you can see that it created 1 through 50. So I created 50 different masks. And let me do a little bit of house cleaning. Let me drill down. Let me delete the keyframes. And let me select it to none. Perfect. Now let's go back. And you can see that After Effects also created a mask for the edge. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and delete that. I'm going to select these points. Hit delete. And delete. Now, let me hide the timbales layer, our original layer. Let me hide this. And let me just switch on to our solid layer. And let's add an effect called stroke. So go to generate stroke. And stroke, you can outline any of the masks. So we see, you can see we have 50 different masks. You can say we want to stroke all the masks. So let's select it. And you can also have the option to stroke sequentially in order. Now, let's go and change the color. And very important, for the paint style, let's select it on transparent, so everything is on a transparent background. And if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that right here, it's on a transparent background. We can increase the size, for example. 
and let's make this 100. And we can animate these lines with the start or the end. I usually keep it very simple and just animate the end. So at the very beginning, make sure that your time indicator is at zero, zero. Make this zero for the end so you don't see anything. Put a keyframe. Let's go forward to one second and let's make this 100. Very simple, just two keyframes from zero to 100 and let's check it out. There you go. So it's animating sequentially. If you don't like it sequentially, take it out, deselect it, and let's take a look. You can see the difference. And if it's too slow, just bring in this keyframe and we can make it quicker. Perfect. And then once you're done, you can go back to your video and that comp, you can bring it in and we can bring it in and we can scale it down Let's scale it to about 45 for example we can scale it right here and you can see that we might need to make it the lines the brush size a little bit thicker let's make it eight and you can add effects you can add the glow stylized glow and you can make it 0 33 and let's switch it to a and b and let's give this like a blue glow and there you go. So we play it back, it'll animate. Now let me show you the second method. Now let me show you the method that I used to create the Timbales, Wonder Woman, and the Jet Ski. And that was just simply using the pen tool and the shape tool. So let's select our image, click and drag to the composition icon, and I'm going to create a new solid layer. The color doesn't really matter. Let's make sure that we make it comp size and hit OK. Now, this solid layer, let's name it Timbales. And for now, I'm going to hide it. So click on this eye icon and let's hide it. And let's go to the image, hit T for opacity, and let's bring down the opacity. I'm going to turn off the transparency grid for now. And let's go back to the Timbales. So make sure that you go back and it's selected, but it's turned off. While it's turned off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it using a combination of the pen tool and the shape tool. And we have different tools. We can use the rectangle, the lips, the polygon. For this one, I'm going to use the lips tool and let's draw our first ellipse. And I'm going to hit control T for the transform tool so I can rotate it and place it perfectly on the timbales. Perfect. Hit enter and I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to trace perfect and let's change the color so we can see it better. You can always go back and if you need to tweak the lines you can tweak the lines make sure they're perfect. And you decide how many lines you want to create. For this one, I kept it very, very simple for the dance video. It was just the top part, this part right here, and then one line right here. So let's create one more line. And let's go back to the pen tool and let's create this arch. Perfect. And that was it. That's all I did. And let's unhide it. Let's bring it back and let's go back and drill down and let's set it to none. And let's add the stroke, go to effect, generate stroke and let's select all mask. The stroke sequentially. Let's make the brush size five for now and the brush hardness. Let's make it 100. Very important for the paint style. Once again, we need to select on transparent. So it's on a transparent background. And if we solo it, and if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that it's on a transparent background. Let's change the color so you can see it better. There you go. So you can see that it's on a transparent background. Let's change the color back to white. And let me toggle off the transparency grid. And like I mentioned, very easy to animate. Let's just animate the end. And let's make it zero. 
the time indicator. Let's go to zero and let's put a keyframe for the end. Let's go to one second and let's make this 100 and let's play back. And actually I messed up. Let's make this 100. Perfect. And let's go back and let's check it out. Nice. And if it's too slow, we can always go back and bring this keyframe closer so it's quicker. And just play around with the timing of the keyframes so you can get the perfect timing. And if you want to modify the lines, you can always go back. You can modify the lines. For example, hey, I want this line. You know, I want to modify this line. Let's make sure that we have this point selected. Okay, we can bring this point and we can bring this point here. Now for the other timbales, all I did was make a copy, control D, and I just, you can either move the solid layer or what you can do is you can hit M so you can see the mask and select your different mask and hit control T to bring up the transform tool and just bring it over and then you can rotate it. So that's what I did to create the timbales. And once again, you bring that comp into your dance comp. Let me give you a quick overview of how you can do something more complex, for example, like Wonder Woman, which is a little bit more intricate. There's a lot more involved. Now this is a reference. This is a reference picture that I used. And this is the solid layer that I created. And let me show you the different mask. And you can see that I try to keep it very simple despite, like I mentioned, being an intricate drawing. And if we go to the mask, you can see that it just kept it very organized. And what I did was, let me bring this back and let me show you, let me play it back. You can see that I used a plugin called 3D Stroke and it's by Trap Code. It's a paid plugin, but it's an amazing plugin because one of the features that I like about Trap Code 3D Stroke is that you can taper the lines. You see that option, taper, I enabled it and you have different properties and you can have the lines tapered. So I did that so you can have the hair tapered and parts of the body as well. And it just gives it a nice unique look like it's more like a drawing. Now I get this question all the time. Hey CM, how did you change the background? The answer is simple, but the process is tedious and time consuming. Basically what I had to do was do rotoscoping and rotoscoping is a process of cutting out frame by frame, your footage so you can reveal layers behind it, beneath it. And this is my rotoscope layer. And if I solo it, you can see that it's on a transparent background and which allows me to put the beach, to put the palm trees, to put the jet ski. And when you put it all together, these layers are behind the talent. Now to do rotoscoping, you can use a rotor brush, you can use a pen tool, you can use Mocha, some other software but I used a different technique that might be helpful for you. Now this method works best when it's on a tripod and it's called a difference mat. So let me show you the basics of the difference mat. So I'm gonna grab my footage, bring it to the composition icon, and for difference mat to work, you need to give it a clean plate, a part of your image that doesn't have the talent. So you can see that at the beginning, I let it run, made sure that my talent you know, weren't in frame so I can get a clean plate. And for this one, let's select this frame, which is perfect. We don't see our talent. Let's right click, go to time, freeze frame. So this whole layer is frozen. Let's go back and bring our footage again. And this bottom one, the one that we froze, let's call it clean plate. Let's rename it. And this top one is our footage. And let's call this difference mat. Okay, let's hide our clean plate. Let's go back to our difference mat. And let's add an effect. Go to effect, go to keen, go to difference mat. Now difference mat, we need to select our clean plate. And what difference mat will do, it'll subtract the pixels from your clean plate with your footage to give you a cutout of your talent. And you can see that they're cut out. And if we go to mat only, you can see the black and white mat. 
it's not perfect. You can see part of the logo, the S. It didn't select all of the genes, but we can tweak these parameters a little bit. Okay, you can leave it here, but I wasn't happy with the results. I wanted to take it a step further. So what I did is I exported this black and white mat and I opened it up in Photoshop. So let's go to Photoshop. So here we have it in Photoshop, the black and white mat that I exported with the effect difference mat. I also did the same sequence in color and I'm gonna use this one in color just so I have a reference. So this is what I did. I created a new file, 1920 by 1080 went to the black and white map, control A to select all, control C to copy, went into the new file, control V to paste, and I went to the dance color and did the same thing. Now I did this for every single frame. There were about 37 different frames that I used. And remember, the color one is just for reference that I'm using so I know exactly where the lines are. And I went to the black and white map, grabbed the brush tool, and what I did is the areas that needed to be white, I painted it white, for example, and the areas that needed to be black were painted black. Now, like I mentioned, this is time consuming. So it took me almost, almost a full day to do this. And once I was done, I saved each image as a JPEG. Let me show you that. So in this folder, I have starting from 00, zero and they were numbered, they were saved in sequential order, zero, 00 all the way down to 36. So let's open them and you can see how clean the lines look. Really clean, really nice. Okay, once I'm done with this, let's go back to After Effects. I imported that image sequence. Control I and we navigate to the folder select the first one, zero, zero, and you should have an option that says import sequence. In this case, it recognizes the JPEG sequence, so it says importer JPEG sequence. Make sure that it's checked, hit import, and it brought it in as 30 frames per second, but my footage is 23.976, so we need to change it. To change it, really easy. Right click, interpret footage, let's go to main, and where it says assume frame rate, just type in your frame rate. Now, all of this, I already did it, so let me cancel. And let me delete this one. Let me show you, I have it under assets. Here it is, you can see that now it's set to 23.976. Now, for the very last stage, all we're gonna do is bring in your black and white mat, bring it in, put it on top, bring in your footage, put it beneath it, and make sure that you have the track mat. If you don't see track mat, you just have to right click, go to columns, and go to modes so you can see the track map. Select your dance footage or your main footage and just select Luma Matte. And once you select Luma Matte, you have it on a transparent background. It's a tedious process. It's not for everyone. It's totally up to you. You can just leave it at the stage with the difference mat and you don't have to go into Photoshop. I was being a little bit picky. I wanted to make this really clean. So it's totally up to you. 